I love command line aliases because they're a great way to speed up your daily workflow. We're going to look at a couple of ways to create these today. We're going to look at Git as our use case. Now, Git actually has a built in aliasing system that's part of your Git config. And we're going to take a look at this first. Now, spoiler alert, I don't actually use this system. I prefer something else, which we'll look at next. But let's take a look at how you can do this with the built in tools that Git gives you first. So as with any other Git configuration, we can create an alias by running Git config. Now we should use the dash dash global flag here so that this will be set for our user and not just for the current repository that we're in. And now to create the alias, we just type alias dot and then whatever we want our alias to be. So let's say we want it to be CO and that should replace the checkout command. So if we run this, now we have created a alias for checkout that is just CO. If we cat out from our home directory, the git config file right at the bottom of this file, we now have an alias section and we've aliased co to be checkout. Now we can actually use this alias by doing git co. And this is essentially now the same thing as doing git checkout. If I do git branch, we can see I have both a main branch and an lvim branch. Git co lvim, you can see we've now switched to my lvim branch. Okay, so we can use git co now to switch between branches. So let's go back to our main branch. Now checkout is a pretty simple command, but we can do more complex stuff with this, right? So let's take a look at git log, right? We all use git log all the time to see a history of commits. Let's say I don't really like this history of commits too much information and not really displayed in a useful way maybe i want to do git log with dash dash all and dash dash graph and dash dash format equals one line so let's say this is this is a much more useful output to me i can see one line about each commit i can see the graph of how these branches are connected i want this to be my default for git log so let's wrap some quotes around all that and we'll say git config dash dash global and maybe we'll just call this lg so now let's go ahead and cat out the git config file one more time and you can see it's really that simple we just have to put everything in the command that comes after the git keyword if i run git lg we get my preferred form of output but if we run git log we still get the default output there so git's built-in aliasing system is a great way to create shortcuts for your git commands but like i said earlier i don't actually use this system my preference is to create shell aliases because this way i don't actually have to type that git space at the beginning of each alias so let me show you what i mean here are my dot files i have a zsh directory because that's the shell i'm using and in here we have an aliases file and i have a bunch of different aliases in here and I will have this link down below. These are my dot files. They're available on GitHub, but let me show you what I have for Git aliases. Let's look at Git checkout here. So the alias we created earlier was Git CO, much shorter than Git checkout, but still six characters long. My preferred way of doing this is just GCO. This is something I'm typing all the time, every day. And so I want that to be as few characters as possible. If you take a look at the things at the top of this list, you can see that these are all things that I'm doing all day long, making commits, checking out branches, adding files, deleting branches, looking at diffs. These are all the bread and butter of using Git. And so it's super helpful to be able to run any of these commands with just two or three characters. I'm going to overlay some stats here to show you just how much I actually use these commands. This is coming from my ZSH history file. So it's just the history of every command I type on my command line. And in the last couple of months, these are the number of times that I've used a lot of these common commands. I'm using them all the time. And so having to write just two or three characters instead of a much longer command really makes a huge difference in my productivity. But notice that not all of these are just aliases for a straight command, or maybe that command with a couple of flags. In some of these, I'm actually putting multiple commands together to basically create a alias for a common set of tasks that I often do at the same time. So for example, let's Let's look at this one. When I run GPR, it does a git remote prune origin. But when I run FF, which believe me, as you can see from the stats, I'm running all the time. I'm running both the prune origin and pulling on the current branch doing a fast forward only. It's how I keep my repository up to date. And the thing I really love about this command is that it's actually removed some cognitive load for me. It does things that I don't think about when I run it. I had forgotten until I came back to look at this file in preparation for this video that FF does both the pull and the 
the prune. I totally forgotten about the prune. But as soon as I saw that there, I remembered that a couple of years ago before I created this alias, I was having to remember to do that prune uh, just as often as I was doing the pull because I like to keep my local repository pretty clean. So having to do this prune step is something I'd completely forgotten about thanks to these aliases. And it's just something I don't have to think about anymore. Let me give you another example of that. Look at this one here on line 38, GST. For a long time, this was just an alias for git status, but I recently changed this because I was realizing that almost every time I would CD into a directory, I would run GST to kind of get a sense of what the current state of the directory is. And if that was a git repository, great. I could see whether I had any uncommitted changes that I needed to take care of before I could start fresh work. But I was also running it in non git directories just as like a muscle memory thing, CD and then GST. And so I've changed this a little bit. First, it checks to see if we're in a git repository. And if we are, it runs git status. Otherwise, it runs exa, which I just use as an alternative to ls. So it basically gives me a directory listing. So now I don't really need to think about whether I'm in a git repository or not before I run a command to give me the lay of the land. I can just run gst every time and it works. So there's a quick look at how I think about aliases. Down below, you'll find links to my dot files repository and to the alias file specifically. If you want to see more command line related videos, please consider liking and subscribing. I love working on the command line and tinkering around with these types of tools and I want to do more of this type of content. Uh, so let me know about that and thanks for watching.